while I'll be departing the house at the end of this year, I will never ever give up fighting for this country that I love so much. To all those who have supported me through the years, especially our constituents, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Wow. So Kevin McCarthy is stepping down. He's well, he's not going to run for re-election. He's, he's, ooh, this is getting crazy because this is, it's actually, it's going to make it to where uh, the House is going to be more in play than ever. Welcome back to the program. Dana Lash here with you. Top of the second hour. I was reading his piece. He's got this piece in the Wall Street Journal where he says that I'm leaving the House, but I'm not leaving the fight. And he says that he's got he's going to resign after he was housed as speaker. And that news coming this morning, he'd made the announcement in the Wall Street Journal in this opinion piece. He said that, uh, quote, no matter the odds or personal cost, we did the right thing, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, he says that I'm going to continue to recruit our country's best and brightest to run for elected office. And I'm committed to lending my experience to support the next generation. And so. He said uh, that he's an optimist, elicit his accomplishments. And so now at the end of the year, our majority is now just two seats. I think I said five yesterday, I meant four. Our House majority is now at two seats. So going into 2024, we are going to have uh, two vacancies, 213 Democrats, 220 Republicans. And you got to have two, 218 majority to pass legislation. So we could only, if, we're, if Republicans are passing a bill uh, going into this, that means they, you literally have two votes to spare. That's it. And if they, can't, if they lose more than two votes, that legislation's not passing. Great time for Chuck Schumer to introduce that assault weapons ban in the Senate. I'm telling you. So we're going down to two. And uh, there's already a special election for Santos's third district on February 13th. There was, she was saying that they could appoint somebody, you know, but they're going to do a special election. And that seat, uh, I don't, I mean, there is literally like a 50% chance that the ho- that Republicans will lose the House in 24. Just going to be honest with you. There are so many seats that they have to defend right now. Going into the going into 2024, there are so many seats that they have to defend. And there are a lot of seats in purple areas. Here's the thing about making a coalition. I don't like the term big tent. I know we say big tent, but I think the more accurate way to describe this is a coalition. You got to look at it like that. Because in a coalition, when you make a coalition, you're having people from that uh, that are coming uh, together that agree maybe on 70 or 80 percent of those things. Now, Reagan famously said that my 80% friend is not my 20% enemy. That is how you have to look at this stuff. It's strategic. Everybody wants purity. You will lose all the time by demanding purity. Now, that's not to say, do not do a drive-by like progressives do. We're, we're, that's why you're, you know you're not like that. That's not to say that there aren't issues worth fighting for and digging in on. That's that's just assumed. But on some of these other things and some of these other issues, not even so much the issues, I think the bigger issue isn't the particular topic that, you know, Republicans might be fighting on, but rather the approach, rather the strategy, the tactic that they're using. That seems to be where Republicans get really bogged down because not everybody agrees on the best way to go forward with certain with certain of these strategies. And that's. I mean, it's it's kneecapping them. So this it, it's all about incrementalism. Incrementalism is the name of the game. You got to baby step it. And when you're making a coalition and you have all these different people, especially in 2016, there were a lot of new Republican voters in 2016. When you have that many new Republican voters come in. And they were, po- and populism contributed to that. I like populism in small amounts. Too much and it gets out of control. That's it with anything, really, except capitalism and freedom. But when you're building a coalition, you got a lot of new Republican voters. You got to keep those voters. 
And then it gets really, really tricky. It gets tricky because you have to be consistent on selling freedom. You can't just slap slogans on everything and do a bunch of nonsense. You, you have to be consistent in selling freedom. And here's the other thing that the Republican Party doesn't want to seem to acknowledge. You got to have results. You have to talk about solutions more than criticisms. You have to have an, a record of achievement. You have to be able to bring receipts. Because for independents, you all need to consider this. For people to switch their vote in 2016. Remember, when Hillary Clinton ran, she lost a huge segment of blue-collar voters. These were people who were reliable Democrat voters. They showed up. They voted for Democrats. They showed up. They voted for probably Dukakis. They showed up and they voted for Al Gore. They showed up and they voted for Bill Clinton. They showed up and they voted for John Kerry. They showed up and they voted for Barack Obama. Hillary Clinton was a little step too far. She'd always been unpopular. You need to understand that. She is one of the most unpopular. She probably has negatives higher than Kamala Harris, if I'm being honest. And after all of those years of dutiful party line votes, how did Democrats repay and thank that voting block when that voting block was like, Hillary's a step too far for us. She didn't even go to a, the, a lot of the blue wall states that she, that's why she lost blue wall. She needed, needed to go to a lot of these states in order to maintain Democrat hold. She didn't even do it. And the Democrat Party responded by questioning and impugning the character of all those voters. They were racist because they didn't vote for the old white lady who fell down in the street and lost her Tory Burch flat. They were racist because they didn't vote for her. After being so reliable, were they racist when they voted for y'all? Like all up until that point? Like I'm curious. But that's how they treated them. And they wonder why they made so many of them mad. Here's the thing though. You got to keep those voters. If those voters are going to risk everything, if they're going to risk being ostracized, if they're going to risk having their characters impugned, being called racist, maybe being given the cold shoulder at the water cooler at work, being invited to fewer events with friends because that's how tribal everything is and that's how deep some of these political affiliations run, then you got to give them something for the return of that investment of their vote. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of them were real mad about immigration. They didn't think enough was done. You, you, you got to be, you can't say that I'm going to do all this stuff and then that you were hampered and you weren't able to do it. Either you can do it and you're enough of an ass kicker that you can get it done or you're not. This is why you have to manage expectations as a politician. You go in there and you oversell in a time like this. I know that this time is the only time I think that you would be able to say that. Because these independents are used to seeing something at the end of a hard work day. They're used to seeing receipts. You can't just, you can't do people like this. So this is, this is, I mean, this is crazy. So there's the Republicans have to manage expectations and they got to talk solutions and they have to they have to show a record of deliveries. And they're hurting with independence right now, too. It's not just Democrats. There is a malaise. And this is what the press wanted. This is what I was warning you about months ago. This is why on this program, I have refrained from getting heavy into the primaries until we get closer to Iowa. And I'm very slowly moving in that direction because there is a measurable malaise with the voting block right now. People are tired. And that doesn't just extend to Democrats. It extends to the Republican Party too. They get tired. And then you know how you keep hearing the same stuff over and over again, your eyes kind of glass over. They're tired of hearing about everything. They're tired of hearing about the day-to-day -day machinations of D.C., and Republicans have got to deal with this better. They have to deal with the coalition. They need to focus strictly on results. They need to be focusing on the things that build a coalition. Everything else you can at attend to in that 20% margin. But they need to focus on the economy, having a strong foreign policy, the economy. They need to focus on the border. These are top three things. Because that's going to retain. You'll have people who are independents, that maybe they don't feel as strongly about life as you do. And I hate to say it, maybe they don't even, 
uh, either that or maybe they don't feel as strongly about the Second Amendment as you do. But they are voting their wallet. They're voting their jobs. They're voting not sending their kids to war. That's that's how they're voting. You have the Republicans have to play to that specifically first. Then the other things, because you want those voters to go, maybe I don't agree with you totally on being pro-life, but I do want to make sure that I'm not taxed to death. So I'm going to vote for this Republican. That's how Republicans have to approach this. This is how voters, if you're out there liberty evangelizing, this is how you got to approach it. You're not to the diminishment of these other issues. You're Rather, you're protecting these other issues. And you're focusing on the strong tent poles that keep that coalition together. Keep everybody under the same tent. That's what you're focusing on. This is strategy 101. Unfortunately, there are some people that think you can Leroy Jenkins the hell out of everything, and then they're shocked when they lose. I'm not kidding you all. This is it. I don't want to be like all, I, I honestly believe in my heart of hearts, and I've never said this before. I think that this might be it. 2024 is it. I'm not saying that to be sensational. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to entertain you. I'm saying that because I truly believe it. That's why I'm so dour about some of the stuff at the primary. When I see people acting fools and taking petty shots, I want to just slap the hell out of some people because it is serious. We have fun and we talk about fun stuff and I like to keep it light because I'm, you know, a smart aleck by nature. But there's some serious stuff that's happening around this world, folks. There's some serious stuff happening here at home, and we are on the edge of a knife. This is it. I don't have time for loyalty to candidates in a country that overthrew a monarchy. I don't have time for any of that stuff. Where's the loyalty to us? Where's the loyalty to America's future? Where's the loyalty to our economic security? Where is the loyalty to our border security? Where is the loyalty to making sure that we are secure against geopolitical foes? That's the security that I'm looking for. Now, when I look at the House, everything is on the table. Guys, everything's on the table. There are so many seats that the RNC has got to, has to defend in the House. It's crazy. And a lot of them are in purple districts where Republicans are falling all over themselves trying to get messaging correct. That's why Democrats are trying to corner Republicans on life so hard, by the way, because they want that to be the crack in the coalition. Our side will respond to that more than their side will. That's what you need to realize. And I see all these people. I see all these Republicans and these strategists and these wannabe influencers. These damn influencers on social media have never moved the needle ever. If they moved the needle as much as they did on social media in meat space, we'd be winning elections right and left. We wouldn't be losing paltry stuff that we normally win. Golly, it's turned into such a scam. But I, it's a hard truth. It is a very hard truth. We may lose the house. I think we'll probably lose the house. And I'm not telling you this to get you set. If we stay on the same trajectory right now, we will lose the house. And we'll lose the Senate too. And I dare say the White House. I'm being honest with you. I'm not, I know you're so mad at me because I'm being a cynic right now. I'm not giving you opinion. I'm giving you insight. My opinion is I want something totally different. I'm giving you insight, though. That's why I keep saying that it has to change. And we're not all the way past that exit yet, but we will be in November. It's got to change. We need liberty evangelism. And the Republican Party's got to get its head on straight.